Can you hear all that weird stuff? I don't hear that weird stuff, but we are recording. <laughs> we are live. Um, hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, got uh, myself, Richard Stovall, and Sarah Raymer. Uh, she's broadcasting in from um, Austin, Texas. You'll have to say something for your face to pop up. Oh, I'm hi. I'm like here that. in Austin, Texas. I'm in my living room. <laughs> The way WebEx works is it only will show the video um, for the person who's talking, so it's, it's audio driven. So in order for them to see you, they won't be able to see any gestures that you make um, unless you're making noise at the same time. <laughs> okay, fair <laughs> like, enough. Like the wave, they didn't see the wave. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go over <laughs> we're going to go over some uh, voltage drop problems, and um, we've got a few examples. Um, that come from the 2009, uh, the April 4th, uh, the April 2009 version of the NAPSEP study guide. It's got 92 total problems in that study guide, um, and I recommend that you work through them all. <laughs> um, but it has three problems that are specifically voltage drop, okay? Um, and uh, there's a little bit of confusion with these problems, a little bit of ambiguity, and, and uh, we're going to try to bring some clarity to these particular problems, plus give you, you know, between four to six additional problems uh, that you can work uh, with us um, using the, uh, the, the, the process that we, we show you today um, to, to solve. So by the end of this lecture, you will know how to do voltage drop problems. <laughs> that is my my claim. Okay. So this first question, problem 47, says if the distance from the junction box to the combiner box of figure four is 60 feet, then the smallest wire size between the junction box and the combiner box that will limit the voltage drop to less than 2% when IM is flowing, and uh, I'm just going to point this out to you. Um, IM, this guy right here, I've never seen IM <laughs> displayed anywhere, but in this problem in NAPSA, what they mean is IMP, current at the maximum power, power point, okay? So when maximum power is flowing, um, Keep the voltage drop less than 2% in the circuit when the circuit is 60 feet long uh, between the combiner box and the junction box. What must the conductor gauge be? So, in order to answer this question, we need to actually uh, look at figure four. Okay? Figure four. Uh, I'll go ahead and highlight those things that are relevant to the problem. They're asking what is the Voltage drop between the junction box and the combiner box. Okay, so we're talking about this circuit from the junction box to the combiner box. All right, um, which means that they're talking about one of the two strings because the strings don't get combined until it reaches the combiner box. So you can see that this this uh, this array has a positive to a negative and a positive to a negative. So it's two modules in the string, two modules in series in the string, and two strings in parallel that get brought together at the junction box. But we're concerned with the source circuit, that is the string, and its current and voltages, okay? So uh, we're talking about IM, we're talking about maximum current. So they want us to use this 7 amps as the maximum current, okay? Now, we'll explain a little more uh, uh, about the, the voltage requirement in later slides, but know that for this particular problem, they're wanting to, you to use the nominal voltage, okay? The nominal voltage. This is a 24-volt nominal system, okay? Um, now, the, the VMP of the system is actually 34.2 volts, 2 times 17.1 is 34.2. 
But um, as you'll learn in a moment, in this particular case, they're not actually asking for the VMP voltage to be used in the calculation, but rather the nominal voltage. Okay, so moving forward, um, we are required to use Chapter 9, Table 8 of the NEC to determine the wire resistance. Okay, we can choose from stranded, uh, we, we, we're supposed to choose from the stranded, uncoated copper wire. And this is what this looks like. Okay, in the back of your NEC, in Chapter 9, there is a table called Table 8 Conductor Properties. All right, and uh, there's a distinction made between stranded and solid. Okay, you look right here, the quantity, it says, well, first it says stranding up here, okay, and then it says quantity, and then it says one or seven, one or seven, okay. Know that one is an indication of a solid conductor, okay, and that the seven, which you see here, is an indication of stranded conductor. So we are always meant to be pulling from the stranded conductor uh, uh, table. Typically for PV systems, you're always using standard conductors. Um, I guess if for some reason you were using solid somewhere, you would then do your voltage drop calculation from the, the number one column, the, the solid column. Okay, but the, for these exercises, we're using stranded. We're also pulling from the copper uncoated and we're looking for the ohms per thousand feet, ohms per k feet, or ohms per kilofeet. So it's a strange thing. The only place I've seen this where, where metric terminology is being mixed with the standard terminology. So we have uh, feet, but we have kilos, thousand feet. So go figure. But at any rate, we're meant to be pulling from this column. So we know from looking at this column that the resistance of, uh, say, 18 gauge conductor is 7.95 ohms per thousand feet. And this means that if you had a thousand feet of this stranded eight gauge conductor and you put a, a, uh, an ohm meter on it, you would measure 7.95 ohms, okay? Um, so let's take a look at number eight. We have eight gauge down here, pulling from the ohms per thousand feet. You would be looking at a resistance of 0.77 eight ohms per thousand feet, okay? So that's how you read this table. Now, moving forward. Okay, so the problem is asking, um, what is the, uh, what's the smallest size conductor you can have in this circuit that is 60 feet, okay, um, and not exceed, uh, um, uh, two percent of the uh, uh, voltage drop. Okay, so there's a formula for that. All right, and uh, the best way to get comfortable with this formula is to do it over and over again. Do it three or four times, and 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 you should have it down. So the formula is the voltage drop percentage is equal to the distance. Okay, so now the distance is meant to be round trip distance. All right. As uh, Jim Dunlop mentioned in his, uh, his talk last night, that when you're calculating voltage drop, it's not just from, from, from one location to the next. There's a round trip. Those electrons have to flow all the way back. So if you've got a distance of 60 feet in the circuit, the electrons are actually traveling 120 feet <laughs> all the way around the circuit. So it's two times the one-way distance, okay, times the... Uh, IMP, the maximum current, times the wire resistance, okay, divided by a thousand feet. All right, so that wire resistance comes to you. That value from table, table chapter nine, table eight comes to you uh, in one thousand foot increments. Uh, you may have something less than one thousand foot. So dividing by a thousand feet will will bring it back down to to whatever the actual distance is that you have, um, which you've got. You know, 200 feet, and you're only going to have 20% of the resistance that you would have at 1,000 feet. So, anyway, so you divide by 1,000 feet, then you divide by the system voltage. As I mentioned earlier, the system voltage in this case is meant to be the nominal voltage of the system, okay? Um, so, uh, you, 
utilizing this formula to determine uh, conductor sizing, you take a guess as to which of the uh, um, conductors might work uh, 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 for the problem, and you plug it into a calculator. Okay, so you see we're choosing 0.491 ohms, and I'm going to back up and show you where that comes from. All right, so we're taking a, a, a guess that. Uh, number six stranded at 0.491 ohms is, is going to do the trick. Okay? So, we plug that into the formula. Jump down one. And eventually you take your calculator and you type in uh, two times sixty times seven times the resistance of the wire which is point four nine one divided by one thousand and then divided again by the nominal voltage of twenty four and you get point zero one seven which is 1.7%. So, this conductor size will definitely work um, uh, in keeping you below the 2% design uh, limitation that you've imposed on this system. Uh, however, you still don't know if that's the smallest conductor size. Okay? To determine whether it's the smallest conductor size, you actually need to uh, plug in the uh, resistance for the next smallest conductor and then see what the percentage of, of uh, uh, voltage drop you get with that. Okay? So, going back to this table, okay? Uh, so we were at 0 0.491, and if we want to go, if we want to go to number uh, the next smallest size, that would be eight gauge stranded, which has a resistance of 0.778 per thousand feet. Okay, so um, going back to our PowerPoint, moving forward. <clears throat> in this case, we're plugging in. 0.778 to the same to the same calculation. So we have two times sixty times seven times 0.778 divided by one thousand, and then divided again by twenty four volts. And what we get is 0 0.02723, which is 2.7%, which is more than 2%, so we know that won't work. So, therefore, the smallest conductor size that will work is actually number six stranded. Okay? Um, so that's the answer, number six, which uh, I believe was number C, letter C. So C is the answer, six gauge copper for problem 47. Okay, now we'll move forward to the next problem. So, um, I already talked about this a little bit, but I'll go through this. It says, another thing to consider with this problem is that the answer implies that we be, we are to be using the nominal system voltage to calculate the percentage voltage drop. Later in problem 50, the voltage drop is calculation is done with the actual VMP of the modules instead of the system voltage. This presumably is required because the question states under maximum power instead of just when I am is flowing or when current is the maximum power current. So for some reason, um, uh, NAPSEP in this question is making a distinction of under maximum power condition and making you assume that that means there's a maximum power point tracker there that's keeping that voltage up from the array closer to its VMP versus a system that, um, that does not have maximum power tracking, which its system voltage would be dragged down to something closer to the, uh, the, the actual value 
uh, of the voltage in the battery bank, which is is always lower, uh, and, um, uh, and and it's, it's really an illustration of, of the benefits of maximum power point tracking because you lose a large percentage of your power without maximum power point tracking. Um, so anyway, that's that's the distinction. Don't let it you know muddy your mind because it's just I'm just putting this out there to explain these problems and why there's a difference between them. The problems that you work through as practice won't force you to draw the distinctions in this way. Okay, so 49, referring to figure four. If the length from the junction box to the circuit combiner is five feet, the smallest wire size needed to keep the voltage drop in this circuit less than 1% when the current in the circuit is the maximum power current is what? Okay, so <clears throat> here uh, we're talking about the same circuit, essentially, right? But the difference is we're talking about, uh, well, I'll, I'll make it a little more clear. Okay, so IMP, 7 amps, okay? We're talking about the junction box to the combiner box, so that circuit, this time it's 5 feet instead of 60 feet, and this time it's 1% voltage drop instead of 2% voltage drop, okay? Um, next step is, is wanting to you to use the nominal voltage of 24 volts in this problem. So um, knowing all of that, we can now go back and uh, um, take a stab at one of these values. Um, actually, uh, oh, okay. In this case, we're going to show you a different way to um, uh, reach a conclusion about the resistance. Instead of determining, plugging in a resistive value uh, and seeing if it's less than some percentage threshold, we're actually going to determine the actual resistance that you need to stay beneath based on the percentage of voltage drop. Okay? So, uh, we know that, uh, that there's a 1% voltage drop that is our maximum, okay? And we also know that we're dealing with a 24-volt system, the nominal voltage of the system, okay? So if we take that 0 0.01 times 2.4, we know that in this circuit we can, we can lose 0.24 volts DC without exceeding that 1% threshold, okay? We know that the current is 7 amps, and we know the one-way distance is 5 feet. So in this case, we actually flip the formula around a little bit, and we take 0.24 and divide it by 2 times 5 times 7 to get some value, and then we multiply it by 1,000, and we actually get the true resistance of the circuit. So the way you plug that into a calculator, um, you'll be provided with a, uh, a Casio um, FX2, Casio F260X, I believe. Um, and so you would go 0.24 divided by, open parentheses, 2 times 5 times Seven, close parentheses, equal to, times 1,000, 3.42. So as long as we choose a conductor that is, uh, uh, has 3.42 ohms per kilofeet or less, then we're going to stay beneath that 1% uh, that threshold that we've, that we've applied. So, let's see here. Here the pin. All right. Oh. Back here. Okay. Um, which, uh, well, let me flip back up to the, uh, okay. 
skipped over it. All right. So going back to the pen, 3.42. All right. So we see that uh, number 12 is too much. Number 16 at, at 4.99 is going to have too much resistance. Okay. But number 14 at 3.14 is good. So that's our answer. Standard number 14 at 3.14 ohms is good. So we're raise that. Um, okay, go back to the PowerPoint. And okay, so 14 gauge copper. Now, problem 50. If the distance from the junction box to the combiner box is 60 feet, to keep the voltage drop between the module junction box and the source circuit combiner box less than 2%, under maximum power condition at STC, the smallest wire size that can be used for each source circuit in the system in figure four is what? Okay, so this problem is basically a repeat of problem 47. Everything verbatim is exactly the same, except for this time they are indicating uh, maximum power conditions at STC, okay? Which means that we're meant that we need to assume that there's maximum power point tracking, which means that we can actually use the VMP voltage of the array, um, which if we look at the graph here, the, uh, okay, uh, the VMP of the module. It's 17.1. There's two of them in the series, which means that our VMP is 34.2. That's our system voltage. In all the other respects, everything is the same, but our system voltage has changed. We're still talking about the junction box to the combiner box. We're talking about 70 feet, 60 feet, which round trip is 120. We're talking about IMP. All those things are the same. The only thing that's different is the voltage has changed because we're presumably using maximum power point tracking. Okay. So, um, the answer to that question, well, let's see, we've got, uh, there's two different ways we could do it. And in this way, we're determining 2% voltage drop of 34.2 volts is, as indicated in this, uh, Slide two times, excuse me, point zero two times thirty four point two is point six eight four. So we can lose point six eight four volts in this circuit um, without exceeding the voltage drop of two percent. Okay, so we can take that and uh, divide it by divide. Okay, open parentheses, two times 60 times seven, close parentheses, equal to, mm -hmm. and then times 1,000, okay, 0.814. So, <clears throat> going back to our chapter 9, table 8, point 0.842, is that right? Point 0.814, rather, okay, so point 0.814, um, Number 10, stranded, is going to be too much. Number 8, stranded, however, will work. So, number 8, stranded at 0.778 is less than 0.814, so therefore, number 8 will work in this situation. Okay? So, those are the three problems from... Uh, from the NAVSEP study guide, and uh, 
And now we've got some more to work on. These are ones that uh, uh, Sarah came up with. Um, <laughs> and um, and are, are probably more likely to be the kind of voltage drop questions you would have on the test. Um, but uh, Sarah, do you want me to turn control over to you while you do the uh, uh, problem A? I can certainly try. I'm not sure how to write on this, but um, but I'll do my best. Okay. Well, um, if you uh, use these text boxes, okay, you know, um, like that, then you can okay. can can type within it. Um, and All right. uh, otherwise, actually, actually, I've got one other thing you can try to do. Um, if let me just try this. Annotate. Okay. So you should actually be able to draw. <laughs> see that? Yeah. So clear my annotations. Okay. I'm going to turn over mouse control to you. All right. And, uh, See if you can make that work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so we've got the standard formula is to okay, that's not letting me draw. Hold on. Hmm. All right. Well it's not letting uh, me write. Hold on. So. Let me, uh, go uh let me try Command tab there. Try drawing now. Well, you've got the eraser on. <laughs> oh, that on one's the eraser. The pen's the, the one on the top, right? Right. Yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> boy, that's a two. Okay. All right, I'll, right. I'll try to be a little more careful. All right, so two times the distance. Okay, let me let me start over here. All right. <laughs> All right. So yeah, if you don't have a pen, you may want to just try to type it. Yeah, let me do that. I'm box. gonna do that. Okay. So I'm gonna get out of the. Uh... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hold on. Let me uh, let me clear this. Okay. Now, uh, uh, you you can create grab a text box, put it okay, in place, cool. and, and try to. Yeah, I just uh, I guess I don't have enough control over my big fat fingertips. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to make a new text box. So, yeah. You got to you got to uh grab from the drop down here. I'll I'll start it for you. Sorry. <laughs> All right, let me uh grab it. Okay. That's uh, that's not going to work. You'll have to do it because uh, right now you've got control of the mouse and I can't uh, click anything. <laughs> you got to okay. go to the text box. And click on the drop, drop down. down menu? Yes. Okay. I think now click on text box. Okay. Click that. Now make a square somewhere, a big one. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. It's not doing anything. Huh. Sorry. Um, All right. Well, uh, if I can just write on this. Okay, there we go. Maybe it's just taking a long time to to register what I'm trying to do. Okay. There we go. Now, if I can get my cursor in there. Okay, two times the distance. The distance is 200 feet. Um, and we're going to multiply that by the IMP, which is, we can see up here is 8.2, but we have two strings, which means that our Amps are going to add because those are going to be in parallel. So we've got two times the amps. 
Um, and that's going to be multiplied by our ohms per kilofoot. So I like to work through it with a few different ones and, and figure out which one's right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just start with a uh, number 10. Um, what I did was I took a handy little post-it and I wrote down my ohms for, per kilofoot for every wire size from 14 to 2 so that I didn't have to keep looking at my code book. So I know that number 10 is a 1.24. That's going to be divided by 1,000 because it's per 1,000 kilofoot. Uh, and then we know we're going to divide by the voltage after that. Um, first, um, do you want to give me, how do I get your calculator onto the screen, Richard? Um, or I can just do it on mine. You, you uh, go down to the bottom of the screen with your cursor. Okay. Are you there at the bottom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the way. Okay. It, it doesn't look like it's popping up for you, so I will just throw it up for you. How about that? <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> All right. Let me clear this out. I, I'm having a little lag in the in what I do. Um, Okay. Connecting through, so I still am waiting for the calculator to clear it out. If you think this will go better, we, we can go, go ahead and uh, let you upload. Uh, we can just pass desktop control to you. You can pull your file up, have your calculator, have everything there, and that way you're not having to work through the system like this. Think that'd be easier? Well, no. I mean, it's working now, so I'm just gotta okay. plug in the calculation. So I've got two, okay, no. it just took a second to register what it wanted me to do. So I've got two times 200 um, times my two times 8.2, which I know is 16.4. Then I've got to multiply that by the ohms per kilofoot, 1.24. I'm going to divide that by a thousand. I did that last time. I hit the zero too many times. Sorry. <laughs> so two times two hundred is four hundred, and that is times the uh, sixteen point four. Okay. times ohms per kilofoot of 1.24 divided by, now I'll be real careful with these zeros, 1, 0, 0, 0. It's taking a second. It still says 10 for me. So I know I hit it three times. Or maybe not. Okay. Now I'm going to be dividing that by my voltage. Okay, so I, what I've got here is 8.1344. We can just take that down to 8.1. Um, my voltage with 12 modules at 34.2 is going to be something altogether different. So I've got 34.2 times 12. Did that calculator just disappeared? So um, I'm going to do it on my calculator, and you guys are just going to have to. Uh, there it is. <laughs> Thank you, Trish. 34. Point two times twelve for each module, so I've got four hundred and ten point four. Yeah, there we go. 
So that's going to be, it's going to come down to 8.1 divided by 410.4. That gave me point, uh, zero 0.019, which is the same as 1.9%. Cool. I'm getting some different um, symbols on my screen here. Yeah. Are you seeing that sorry. 12 plus part? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just the problem is that my, uh, my, there's a lag between what I'm doing and I'm, I'm using, I'm trying to get my equal sign. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Now I miss I don't I don't have my last calculation in there, but so basically that's four ten point four divided by um I just typed a bunch of stuff but it's still not there yet. So <laughs> sorry about that. I've been having that's all right. Uh, right. we'll, we'll, Sorry. Uh, if we do another one, we'll turn control over to you on your computer, and that way we won't have this inter interface issue. Okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, okay, it's equal to. We can fix that later. Bring it down. <laughs> um, Eight point one divided by four ten point four um, is equal to one point one percent. Right. One point nine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah one point nine. Okay. Um and the next step really would be to do the same calculation, two times two hundred times two times eight point two times what's the next smallest conductor size? Is it uh, one point it would be the number twelve, which is one point nine eight. One point nine eight um divided by one thousand would be equal to, so um, let's see, so you can go um, two times 200 times two times Eight point four um, times one point two four divided by one thousand, and then divided again by. Uh, oh, I made a mistake. I meant to make it one nine eight. Okay. So I'll go 400 times 16.4 times 1.98 divided by 1,000 divided by 10.4. Okay, is 3.16%. So um, I'll take it a step back. 400 times 16.4 times 1.98 divided by 1,000 is equal to. Finish this out. 12.98. I'm going to run through that one more time. So I think I. 400 times 16.4 times 1.98 divided by 1,000 is equal to 12.98. Okay, so that's correct. All right. And then taking it down one more. Um, We've already got established 34.2, so um, it's 12.98 divided by 410.4 is equal to 12.98 divided by 410.4 is 3.1%. 3.1%. Therefore, number, uh, what, what gauge was that, number 10? Yes. Is the smallest 
vector that will work. Okay. All right. Um, moving forward to the next one. <clears throat> What is the smallest size conductor you can have from an AC disconnect uh, uh, of a 200 uh, watt inverter, 120 volt inverter, to the main pa panel if it is 150 feet away? Assume a maximum voltage drop of 1%. Okay? Um, so, moving forward, uh, first thing we need to do is figure out what the current is. Okay? Uh, we know what the nominal voltage is, and so on the AC side, we do use nominal voltage because, you know, grid voltage is variable. It's got a range, you know. So when you're doing voltage drop on the AC side, you really do want to use the nominal voltage. Um, so to determine the current, it's 2,000 divided by 120 is equal to... Sixteen point six amps. Okay, so that's our maximum current that we should expect from this inverter. We're not sizing for overcurrent protection device. We're not sizing for conductors. We're just trying to figure out what's the maximum actual current we should see, and it's sixteen point six six. Okay, so um, taking it a step further. All right, we know that. We've got uh, two times 150 feet, okay, times um, the, the current of 16.66, times um, a resistive value. Um, we'll go back to, we'll just look at the chart so you can see it one more time. I'll, um, let me just slide this over so I can jump back a little faster, okay. Let's just take a guess that uh, number eight stranded at 0.778. We'll try that. Okay. Okay. Um, brown. Okay. So uh, 0.778 divided by 1,000 is equal to Okay, we'll pull up our calculator, and we'll see 2 times 150, we know is 300, uh, times 16.66, times 0.778, divided by 1,000, is equal to 3.888. Okay, so... Um, 3.888 divided by our system voltage of 120 is 0 0.0324. 0 0.0324. Okay. So, <clears throat> we know that uh, our conductor size is going to have to, is going to need to uh, be larger uh, because we're, at this point, we're exceeding the 2%, the 1% um, uh, voltage drop by quite a lot. So, going back to that table, that's slide 22. Going back to that table, let's skip up a few. So, that was 0.778. Let's try, let's try number 6 at 0.491. We'll just go to the next size up, Okay. We'll go back to slide 22. All right. So it's 300, which is two times the distance, times 16.66, times 0 0.491 divided by 1,000 is equal to what? 300 times 0 0.666 times 0 0.491 divided by 1,000 is equal to 0 0.4. Five, okay. Two point two point four five. Okay. Two point four five divided by one hundred and twenty volts is equal to what? Oh, 
just on the edge, well, actually that's 2%. So that's going to be uh, so 2.01%. And we're trying to target 1%. So we might consider uh, relaxing the design rules around this conductor because uh, it's, uh, it's not quite right. Um, so let's uh, go back to our table and find another resistance level. Okay? Let's jump it up to um, uh, 3 gauge at 0.245. Okay? So 300 times 16.66 times 0.245, is that right? Yes. Yes. 0.245, and that's 3 gauge, okay, divided by 1,000 is equal to what? So 300 times 16.66 times 0.245 divided by 1,000 is equal to, oh, this is going to be just, I can look at this and see that it's going to be just under 1%, so 1.22, 1.22, one point two two divided by one twenty, or maybe right at two percent. One point two two divided by one twenty is excuse me, right right at one percent. It's just slightly over one percent. One point zero one percent. Okay. <laughs> so uh so what would you do, Richard? Would you uh, go to the next size up or or go with that because it's so close? Well, you know, um, it, it, uh, it's, it's the art of electronics, right? Um, it, it really depends on, on uh, you know, what's, what's the overall target. Um, as a rule of thumb, you just don't want to lose more than 2% in any given circuit run. Uh, but in the aggregate, you don't want to lose more than 5%. So if you're already pushing it on every other, you know, uh, 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 measure in the circuit for voltage drop, um, you know, you may choose to be more conservative here, you know. Um, so uh, in, in which case you would go up the next conductor styles. So let's, uh, let's, let's choose to be more conservative and see what that next size conductor is. So that was a number three, so we'll go to number two, okay? And number two is 0.194, okay? So, all right. So, 300 times 16.66 times 0.194 divided by 1,000 is equal to, okay? All right. So, uh, 300 times 16.66 times 0.194 divided by 1,000 and then divided by the, the, the system voltage of 120 and we see that we're at 0 0.008. So, we're at uh, uh, 0.8 of 1%. So, I'll just go ahead and divide it by 120 is equal to 0.08%, which is good. Now, um, this question, seeing how many times we had to go through the calculation to determine what the, what the correct answer was, had we chosen to utilize the other methodology that we talked about, we wouldn't have had to, done for, we wouldn't have had to do four calculations to, to reach the result. And I'll show you how it would have looked using the other way. Okay, so it would have taken 0 0.01 times 120 equals um, 0.12, right? right? No, 1.2, 1.2 volts. 1.2 volts is the voltage that we can lose and not exceed the, um, the, uh, the 1% rule. So, if we were to take 1.2 and divide that by 
um, the 16.66 amps um, times the, uh, the 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 round trip distance of 300 feet, okay, and then times. Actually, hold on. Go back and look at this. Times current, yeah, that's it. All right, then times a thousand. Not bad. Okay. All right. Okay. This is how it would look. Times one thousand. Then we would get a value that is this. So, 1.2 divided by, open for 16.66, times 300, close parentheses, is equal to times 1,000 is equal to 0 0.240. So that's the level of resistance that we must be below in order to uh, uh, not exceed the 1% rule. So this would be, the answer here would be 0 0.240. And we would go to our table, Chapter 9, Table 8, and we'd look for a resistance value that was below 0 0.240. And you can see, down here at the bottom, 0.194 is the first time we see a conductor that is less than 200.240 uh, uh, ohms of resistance. Okay, so um, we're showing two two different ways of achieving the the answer, but uh, uh, in doing so, uh, we're also showing that it might be easier to learn the the, uh, the second way, the one that we just went through, because it keeps you from having to go over the calculations again and again and again, determining what that resistance value. Uh, is for a given percentage loss, and then compare it with the table and choose choose the one that's smaller than that. All right. So that was problem B, and the answer was we'll say two AWG with a resistance of point one nine four, I believe, right? Was point eight, I believe. Well, point zero eight was the percentage, but the actual resistance from table two ninety, uh, chapter nine, table eight. Oh, right, right. Um, it was point one nine four right. is the resistance of the two uh, American right. water gauge, right? Right. Okay. Now um, we've got problem C here. Uh, do you have the, the, uh, the thing pulled up on your computer? Do you want me to just transfer control over to you? And you can fill out that uh, Well, yeah, you can transfer the screen over, and then I should be able to pull this up and, and work it on my end. Okay. I'm just thinking that might be a little easier. So okay. I'll give you control. That way you won't have to, uh, won't have to worry about the delay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. All right. So, um, can you guys see my video as well as my screen? I only see your video. I don't see your screen yet. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I, uh, hold on. I've got the PowerPoint brought up. So I guess we just need to register through, or it needs to. I'm not seeing where you're sharing your screen. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. I'm used to that uh, beginning screen where it asks me if I'm going to share my screen, but I have to go do it over again. All right. Now we're there. Okay. Now can you see it? Problem C? Yep. 
All right. What wire gauge would you use to design for less than 2% voltage drop between a PV output circuit and DC disconnect, assuming the distance is 14 feet and the system consists of four modules in series with an IMP of 18 uh, of 8.2 amps and the VMP of 27.6 volts. So, go to this next slide where we have a little more room to work with. This one's a little bit quicker to work. Um, we don't have to add um, any voltages because there's only one strain. Um, when we have our IMT, uh, the maximum power current right here. So um, we can go straight to that first calculation. Um, that's the two times the distance. Our distance is 14, so that's 28. Um, and then we're going to multiply that by the IMP, which is 8.2. We're going to multiply that by our uh, ohms per kilofoot resistance. Um, well, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the number 12, uh, and that resistance for um, ohms per kilofoot is 1.98. So 1.98, if we go with 12, divided by 1,000, and then we're going to divide that by the voltage, which we have here is 27.6. Calculator. I'm waking it up. Okay. Oh, no. Mine's basic. I got this while I was uh, waiting for you to do something. I don't have the scientific version. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, you might find yeah. that if you go into the uh, the properties for your calculator, you might be able to select scientific. So. You know, I don't even think that I'm going to need it anyway, right? Because this is just basic multiplication. So right. um, 28 the state line multiplication. times yeah, 8.2 times the wire resistance is 1.98. We can go straight through this entire calculation without hitting equals, it's a beautiful thing. So divided by 1,000, and then we're going to divide that by the voltage. The answer is 0 0.0164, which is 1.6 percent. Okay, the only thing I would... Uh caution here is that you have four modules in series, so it needed to be four times 27.6, right? You are right. I messed <laughs> up on that. <laughs> All right, so, whoops, let me go back here. All right, so, All right, 27.6 times 4, 110.4. So we'll just change this to let me get in there. All right, so back to the calculator. times 8.2 times 1.98. We're obviously going to need a different wire gauge, but we'll just go through this this way. All right. Um, so <laughs> that's point zero 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 four. I believe it's a point zero zero four. So what that means is that is 0.4%. Um, so we can use a smaller wire. So let's try, um, let's, we're getting crazy small. See, this is what happens when I design problems. I get something that's just insane. 
<laughs> you would never really end up with this calculation. Okay, 28 times 8.2 Whoops. times. All right, so let's go to a, a size 14, which is 3.14. Divided by 1,000, divided by that voltage. All right. Divided by 1,000, divided by 110.4. And this is where I start to think, yes, I should learn how to do the calculation the other way. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I just realized I've got a plus sign up there. Now, I'm asking myself the question here, if I started getting my wire sizes this small, am I going, uh, this is a question for you, Richard, am I going to end up with uh, a wire size so small that I really can't use it anyway for a system like this? Well, I mean, the, the reality is uh, most trucks roll with number 10, so you're not using, you, you're typically not using smaller than 10 gauge wire. Um, but uh, this is just an exercise, you know, is trying to understand the calculation. So, uh, and you know, maybe quantify exactly what the voltage drop would be. Um, but uh, all right, yeah. So let me just let me exercise. go out on a limb and, and and try the calculation the other way. And please correct me as I go if I do it wrong, because I haven't actually done it this sure. way on my own. I was doing it the other way. Um, all right, so. Point, start with point zero one. Is that right? Uh, well, you're trying. You're going for less than two percent voltage drop. Two percent. So right. So point zero two. Yeah. All right. So we're starting with the point zero two. Uh, we're going to multiply uh -huh. that. Hmm. Doing yeah, the, the equation voltage. backwards. Okay. By the system voltage. Mm hmm. Um, and that will give us. Two point two oh eight. Okay. That's how many volts you can lose without right. exceeding two percent. Right. So then we're gonna take our uh IMP of eight point two. Right. So well I would I would start Go ahead. if you want to draw the equation out, um you would start with an open parenthesis. Right. Parentheses, and then do two point two zero eight. That's the numerator. And then um, uh, divided by, and then open parentheses again. You know, I feel silly, but I don't know where the divided by key is on my keyboard. I swear it's the, not there. The forward left. It's, it's right next to the shift forward on the right. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Divided okay, by, divided by. And then open, open parentheses again, believe it or not. <laughs> no, not close, but open. Because you're going to do it. Oh, it, it, right, 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 right. Yeah. Gotcha. And then, and then it's um, uh, 8.2 times 28. And then close parentheses, close parentheses. All and right. then, uh, and then times again, and then so it's not equal <laughs> times one thousand, and then equal. Ah, uh, yes, thank there. you. Okay. So you can plug out all all of that into a scientific calculator and you get a result. Um, <laughs> but a little bit so harder to do with my Bobo one. one. <laughs> yeah, look look at your uh, calculator. Go up to file. Or the, yeah, 
I just want to see if your calculator can be turned into a scientific calculator. It doesn't on, seem to give me that option. Okay, I can't see any of that. Not even under tax calculator preferences? Uh, no, I have about calculator, hide, quit. Okay. Oh, there it is. View scientific. Go back one. The view. Ah. There you go. Oh, boy. All right. Here we go. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to type it in just like I've got it down there. 2.208 divided by, and then in other parentheses, 8.2 times 28, close parentheses, times 1,000. Does that look right? <laughs> That's an incredibly high number. So I think uh, there was a double parentheses there that needed to happen. I don't know if it's there right. or not. Yeah, that's the number I'm getting. I did do double parentheses. Nine twenty six. Um, twenty eight point two times twenty eight. 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 Twenty eight Okay, I I'm sorry, 28 times 8.2, um, yeah, 229. Just do the same calculation that you did at the top, but plug in the resistance value of 9.6 and see if you end up with 1%. Somehow I don't think you will. Um, okay, so 2. Point, okay, I'm sorry, do the same calculation up as up here. I'm sorry. Yep. I'm so you just created a resistive value in your calculation that is 9.6 ohms right. per thousand feet. Plug that into the previous calculation where you're trying to determine your voltage drop based on the resistance that you apply. Okay. Right, right, right. Oops. That's where I was supposed to put that number in. All right, so 28 times... 8.2 times my crazy 9.6 divided by... Actually, I think 9.6 is going to be exactly right. There you go. 1,000 divided by 110.4. So, that's yeah, it. that's right, but... Um, yeah, but that that's it. <laughs> the point is, <laughs> the equation works. Oh, uh, so now go back to the table, which is um, just uh, just go to the left and, and, and go up right, back, right. To the, back to the nine table eight. And I think it's going to be like off the charts. <laughs> it is. It is off the charts. <laughs> right. So, so you know, so, so, so click on it. Did you click on it? I mean, I'm yeah, on the uh, yeah, I'm on the conductor property. So, uh, wire gauge uh, for a size eight, you know, size 18 wire gauge ohms per kilofoot is 7.95. So okay, <clears throat> so there there isn't a conductor that's smaller than that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, at 18.45 ohms per thousand feet. 18 becomes the correct answer in this case because it's the only available choice. But, all right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. If there is someone that will watch this video later, thank you for bearing with me on that.
Uh, it was easier to do on paper, and then I, I made an error um, because I did not add, add my voltage together. So um, got to take your time on these things. So do you want me to do the next one? Yeah, you go ahead. You're, you're a bit quicker at it than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Start. Turn my desktop. That was problem D. Right? So now we're on problem yeah. D. Cool. In a system consisting of three series strings of 14 modules, each with a BMP of 29.5 and an IMP of 7.8. What is the smallest conductor available to allow for less than 1.5% voltage drop between the PV output circuit and the DC disconnect that is 32 feet away? Okay? So, um, so the first thing we'll do is I'll, uh, I'll just go ahead and get the system voltage. Okay? So I'll go um, uh, 29.5 times 14 is equal to all right, uh, 14 times 29.5, 413 volts. So that's our voltage. Four hundred and thirteen volts. Okay? And um, our IMP is equal to um, 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 Okay, so it's a PV output circuit. It's three times 7.8 amps, which is equal to three times 7.3 times ah, three times 7.8, 23.4, 23 23.4. So that's our current. Okay, and our distance is equal to 32 feet times 2 for the round trip distance is 64. Okay. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and, and try that uh, uh, the VD, uh, the, the voltage drop, absolute value of the 1.5% times 413 is equal to 0 0.015 times 413 is equal to 6.195. So we can lose 6.195 volts without exceeding our parameters. Okay? So let me uh, set up the equation now where we've got... Okay. All right. Move this down. Okay. So we want to go... Text box is fighting me. <laughs> All right. So, um, open parentheses, 6.195 volts uh, divided by, open parentheses, uh, 64 feet times um, uh, 23.4 amps, um, close parentheses, close parentheses, times 1,000 is equal to something. So, uh, Going into the calculator, we start with an open parentheses and go 6.195 divided by, open parentheses again, 64 times 23.4, close parentheses, close parentheses, times 1,000 is 4.13. So we can have a conductor that has a resistance of 4.13 ohms per k feet. Okay. So going to our table, we can see that uh, there it is. It looks like um, 4.99. It looks like number 14 will work. Four, number 16 stranded would be too too much resistance. Number 14 stranded is okay. So let's uh. Let's go back to the problem and, and try it the other way. Let's, let's plug in number 14 at 3.14 and see how, see how it looks for us. Okay? 
All right. So um, we can go with uh, another text box here. Well, let me just jump into this one. Okay. So trying it the other way, if we did um, <clears throat> the current, which is, well, the two times the one-way distance, 64 feet times the current of 23.4 um, times the resistance of 3.14 divided by 1,000 and then divided by uh, the system voltage, which is 413, we get a percentage value that is what? So let me pull this up. Okay. So I can go 64 times 23.4 times 3.14 divided by 1,000 and then divided again by 413, and it's 1.13 percent, which is below 1.5 percent. Okay, so it, it jives. So uh, using number 14 gauge wire means that we'll have a voltage drop in this circuit of 1.13%. And that's it. All right. Um, we've got our... Oh, no, there's a problem F, too, huh? Okay. Yeah, we might just want to let everyone do that one on their own. <laughs> no, we can do it either. We can, okay. We can yeah, do we've gone on long enough. Hopefully this, this uh, gives you some sense as to how to do this. Uh, we'll let you do E and F on your own. Uh, we'll, we'll publish them on the site tonight, and um, uh, uh, we'll just publish the questions both in the PowerPoint slide and, of course, this video will get posted tonight as well, um, along with the, the Kenny Greiger video. He's going to be uh, uh, speaking tonight. Um, try to work problem E and problem F on your own. Tomorrow, we'll give you the solution to problem E and problem F. So I think we're going to, to sign off, and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.